This is Sport Night Amplified with Andile. Okay. 6 till 7 p.m. Powered by SABC Sports. Let's go. Let's go. Hi, my name is James Gamte. I am your guest on Throwback Thursday. Thanks to those who got my name right and hard luck to those who didn't. My name is James Gamte. I'm glad to be your guest on Sports Night Amplified with Andy Le at Metro FM. 6 till 7 p.m. on Metro FM. Cobra. Hey, Andy. How are you? Good evening. I'm going to go to Can you hear how nice it is, though? <laughs> it sounds so good. <laughs> the last thing is that I uh, heard you mentioning human stuff. I'm actually in human stuff, just taking a break. Oh, you're back home. I'm back home. I'm back home, brother. Back home. James, I mean, we're going back to a moment, and I want us to tell the full story of James Gamter in the next mm-hmm. 40 minutes as best we can, because you uh-huh. must understand that we're going back 14 years ago. Many South Africans 14 years ago, you know, mm-hmm. those who are now teenagers, those who are now, you know, working in university, listening to this in their first cars, driving from work, you know, home. Mm-hmm. You know, they were so young back then. Even those that were old enough, maybe not into golf then, they might not exactly know the story of James Gamte in golf. Many have seen, I know because of television, you know, the other side of it, but they might not know the golfer James Gamte. Can you believe that it's 14 years ago already since that maiden victory in the Asian tour? Absolutely. The time goes so fast, and um, it actually feels like yesterday. Um, but uh, it's part of history. It's behind us. You've got to look forward to what, what comes up next. But uh, as you say, I'm also very, very amazed that uh, no one, ever since I've been out there and, and, and managed to, to do the, exactly the same thing, and it, it mm. always uh, sad, saddens me that uh, we have to wait for so long to create another uh, 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 player of color, especially when it comes to golf. Let's go back to the 8th of February, 14 years ago, 2009, mm. when you won the Asian Tour International. Mm. Talk to me about that day. What do you remember of that day? Oh, absolutely. It was one of the amazing... Um, uh, I remember I was just traveling from South Africa, and uh, it was my first time actually going to Asia. And uh, I remember very well, I just had a great week here in, in, in South Africa in, in, at Sun City. And then I arrived late for tour school, and I managed to finish uh, fourth for, for, from tour school. And the following week, I played my first tournament and I won it. And, and probably one of the best stories because... Um, I didn't even think I'd be able to qualify to get my, my Asian tour card. And from there, I just enjoyed playing there. Played in, I played in Asia for like four years. But uh, now, I had a lot of cards. I, I was playing in the U.S. I was playing on the European tour. I was playing at home. So I had to play everywhere uh, and, and try and make everyone happy. But uh, that win was a special win. Just to, to give context... Who are some of the players in and around you at that time that people might, you know, know or people that might notice? Who are some of the players that are from around the world that are on the up and come up as James Gamte is making his mark in golf? Oh, I mean, I mean now they are the uh, probably they in the top ten in the world. I remember I was uh, well, I was traveling with Rory. Rory was my traveling partner. Don't just say Rory, yeah. Chief. He's Rory to you. You know, he's not just Rory to the rest of the world. Tell them who you're talking about. Rory McIlroy was uh, his father. He, he said uh, he wants him to travel with me around the world when I was playing on the European tour so that I can give him the experience what it feels like to play on the European tour because I was already there for a couple of years ahead of him. Um, who else was there? We had um, Ricky Fowler. Ricky Fowler was out there. Louis was there. Charles was there. Uh, it was quite a couple of these, golfers. These are the best golfers in the world right now. Absol- absolutely. That's what I'm saying. DJ, Dustin Johnson, our, our favorite uh, guy to travel around with. So we had quite a, a lot of good golfers around us that were playing with us at that time and traveling together with us. That was most important, amazing thing, you know, to watch these kids going up and become who, who they are now. 
and you are ahead of a Rory McEnroe at that time. Oh, absolutely, because I was the one who was teaching him most of the time how to travel, how to do that. But I guess, I guess, I guess Rory, um, uh, he knew what he wanted to do, and uh, he had a plan. He was young enough, and he just focused on that, and then he went on, you know. Some of us, we just, we play and we achieve what we want to achieve, and then we move backwards. And uh, unfortunately for us, the, 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 the players of color, it also becomes a, a, a difficulty to be able to get sponsorships, you know. And those guys, they grew up into golf. And on our side, we probably know mostly football and all those things, but golf was not, is not exposed that much into mm. our community. And I, w- I want to get to, to the difficulties that you then faced, you know, that is going to bring us to what I... You know uh, what, what we can call when a James the tragedy of the James Gunter story. You know, but we'll, we'll get to that. I want to go to the celebrations now. Here you okay. are. You are lifting this trophy. It's the 18th. It's the 8th of February mm. in 2009. 14 mm. years ago, a young James Gunter with the future ahead of him. You lift this trophy in front of all your peers, people that are today some of the greatest golfers in the world. You know, uh, you are overseas. You are practically living there, earning this money in dollars. Talk to me about those good days. Talk to me about that particular day and all the good things about that day. It's amazing, Andile. Can you imagine as a young little kid coming from Gwanam Zam, human store? Is there even a, is there even a golf course, Gwanam Zam? Yeah, we do have. We, yeah, do have. we, do. Well, we grew up. We grew up next to the golf course, but we used to use it. For, to play football on it, <laughs> <laughs> and until 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 I decided to to um, until I decided to to make sure that um, I, I try something different where I'll be able to 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 to, to compete because I love competing, and 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 golf came along that way, and that's how I started playing golf. But coming back to your question. Well, can you imagine now you are in Asia, you're in Thailand, I mean, coming from a small town, and here you are, you, you, you win a golf tournament. Hmm. And, and the next thing, celebrations are different, not controlled. Number two, lack of discipline cut kicks in, and you grow up in a different environment. Where, where you just absolutely don't have control of your celebration. I mean, we just asked celebrated for like a year, I think. What? Because that achievement was way too much for me. But if I knew then, now, I would be able, that's why I, I, I started to have my own foundation, where we, we bring in a lot of discipline, uh, um, how to, to, to control uh, um, your, your winnings and, and how you can control your career going forward. Because I was looking at all these guys with their careers, they kept, they keep going forward and forward and forward. And us black guys, once we've achieved something, we, we think it's the end of the world. And, and that's what is needed to be injected in the heads of our brothers, especially the young ones that are growing up, that just by winning one event, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You've got to keep focusing until your career gets to the, to the level where you want it to be. And... You know, I gave a clue a little bit earlier to people to, you know, kind of try and figure out who you are. And I mentioned Tiger. <laughs> and I know that uh, this is one of, this is, you know, when we're still speaking about the good of your story, this mm-hmm. was a stamp of approval. This was, you know, already, you know, he wasn't a Rory McIlroy up and coming. No, this was a man that was what? already, you know, had his feet in the sand. This was a man that mm-hmm. so many already knew. And he kind of stamped to say, I approve of this man. Tell me about you and Tiger Woods. Oh, absolutely. It was, it, I met him at his pit when he was playing his best, best golf. I remember I had just won, and if I had just won the Dimension Daughter at Sun City that week. And uh, Uncle Kaya Nola invited, got me an invite to play at the Dubai Desert Classic. So when I won on a Sunday, we left on a Monday. We arrived on a Tuesday morning. The first thing I did, I went straight to the golf course. And I was on the putting green, and I was putting, and I was like, this is a new venture for me, you know. And then there comes Tiger Woods on the putting green. There's only two of us. 
Hmm. The, the first thing you did, he walked up straight to me and said, congratulations, James. We'll play on Sunday. And I was so shocked. What? Tiger that Woods he actually knows who you I are. I was shocked. I was shocked that he actually knew. <laughs> then, then he said to me, I've been following your career, and I'm so happy that finally you, you go through it. So that week, we spent a lot of time together at, in Dubai. And the week after, and as more time goes on, I get to the U.S., I see him, we catch up. It was just an amazing. And for me, I was like, wow, meeting my, my, my role model, my icon, is just one of my highlights. My career can end right now. Hmm. That was me. And how long did this relationship last? It went on up until now. <laughs> wow. So, so... So um, I remember I had, an, I, had an, I had an interview before the, 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 the Masters where he went to play. Mm. And, and, and um, he just realized that his time has come. These kids have come up. If he really has to win a tournament, he has to play his best golf he's ever played in his life. Mm. And that's why he says it's time for him to move on and allow the others to come in. And that's part of the game. You've got to be able to accept that. And mm. that is what is happening. I said, guys, we are we are now forty. There are kids who are twenty two years old. They hit the ball a mile and their mind is so strong. And that's what is a, is the biggest part about this whole thing. It's about having a strong mind. So these kids have learned to what Tiger has done and, and they, 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 they inject they got injected by by Tiger's mentality at a very, very young age. At a very, very young age, these kids, they understood what the game is all about, thanks to Tiger Woods. You know, James, there's people listening right now saying to themselves, unbelievable, there's a South African that was once at that level. But not only that, but he's black. Yeah. He's like me and you. you, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you you've, been, you've been throwing um, you know, little hints of that it did go wrong at some point. You know, that dream got deferred. That dream took a bit of a detour. I want to get into that in just a bit. And I've also got some people that, you know, um, would, would like to share in on the story of James Gamton. Of course, James has turned his life around. And, um, you know, there's a foundation to which he seeks to help others as well, which we'll, we'll touch on at the um, towards the end of the show as well. But let's take a quick break. When we come back from that, we carry on with the James Gamton story. This is Sport Night Amplified with Undila. James Gumter is our throwback Thursday guest. We're going to go now to Michael Flismas, golf uh, journalist who joins us on the line. Michael, thanks so much for joining us and welcome. That's a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. I knew that if I needed a journalist at short notice to speak about this, I could call you. And we appreciate <laughs> that you took us on because we're telling the extraordinary story of 14 years ago when a young James Gumter, a man that the world was watching at the time, goes and wins his very first, this time around, of course, it was a season-opening Asian Tour International. What do you remember of James's rise uh, in the golf world? James was, was, was phenomenal when he burst onto the scene. You know, he was a, he was a very good amateur as well. And, uh, you know, he was a member of the Ernie Els Foundation, um, so, so he was, you know, there was a lot of hype around James and, and, and we all sort of knew that, that, that you know, that this man could play and, and, and you saw it when he played as well. And, and, you know, a lot of people, you, you know, they, they, they point to that 2009 Asian Tour International, which was a terrific victory for him. I mean, he shot 63 in uh, uh, the second round of that tournament. But, but he's a four-time winner on the Sunshine Tour, and a lot of mm. people sometimes forget that. Um, you, know, that uh, you know, the big one for me was that Dimension Data Pro-Am that he won um, in 2008. Um, you know, he beat, he beat veteran James Kingston um, to win that title, but that was huge. That was the, the first major victory by, um, you know, by a black Sunshine Tour professional on the summer section, that main mm. summer section of the tour um, and that title that he won has been won by you know Retief Horton uh, Nick Price Mark McNulty wow. Darren Clark Lee Westwood so so that for me was a real coming of age it was like you know this is this is a guy that that can win at the highest level and and he's proved it by winning by winning this title James is listening to all of this and he's smiling you know he likes it when uh, you know we, we reminisce <laughs> and go back to these moments James, out of all the victories, I mean, I know I was picking on just the one, you know, but 
when you hear now Michael Flissman speaking about this and going back to so many uh, of the great achievements, which one sticks out for you? I think uh, Mike is right. Um, um, it's the dimension data for me because, uh, in fact, I was looking at the names when we played in George Fan Court, and I, I took time to look at the names that have won the tournament, the previous winners, and I just could not believe my name was 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 was, was part of the the the, the um, their names, and 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 it probably it will sink in when one day I sit back and I I, I try to refresh on my career, mm. or to what have we actually achieved uh, up until this far, because I've always um, tried to ignore things that I've achieved so that uh, they don't disturb what I still need to achieve. So I ignore a lot of things that I've achieved so that I can keep working further so that I can achieve more. Michael, when you looked at the career, when you saw him play back then, what was it about James Gumte that was so special? What was it that brought him the, you know, the, the fame, the, 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 the game, and uh, the, the many tours that he then uh, got the cards to play in? What was so special about his game? What, what I always appreciate about James is, is you know, he's always, he's always just looked so in command and so calm out on the golf course. He's never looked like he's felt, um, you know, overawed by the situation or the pressure. He's always just looked like... You know, I, I was made for this. He looked really just calm out there, no matter what the situation. I mean, I've been privileged to, uh, you know, I've, I've covered the game for 30 years. I've seen a lot of James's golf. I've had moments where I've, I've been able to walk with him, and you know, and and he's, you know, he's always so friendly. He always comes over, says hello, and and, and greets you, and has a has a great chat. Um, you know, even even when he's in a in a tournament round, and uh, I think that that calmness. I mean, he's obviously a great striker of the ball, and I've always loved seeing that as well. But just that calm nature that he has out on the golf course um, has always has always struck me. He's never really looked like the situation is is bigger than him. Michael, we really always appreciate that thirty years worth of knowledge that you every now and then bring it out to us here. Thank you so and much. And I think James James should actually tell you the story before I go. He should tell you the story because I remember when he won that Died Archer Pro Am. He, that whole week, he carried a little piece of paper with him with a Bible. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> James oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I go, Mike, Mike, Mike remembers that. I remember that. What's the story, <laughs> James? What were you carrying? <laughs> I was carrying a piece of paper with, um, with my Christian verses on it. And uh, I actually had write it on my, on, my, on my vest when I was wearing it. Wow. You know? So I was carrying that verse the whole week. And that's what I was, I kept taking out of my bag, either when I'm done playing golf, just to remind myself what, I'm, what I was there for. So I had that. That was my thing for every single time, even on the golf course. I pick it up and I looked at it, and I put it back in my bag. I was carrying that the whole, the whole week. That's amazing. Michael, thank yeah. you. I, re I really enjoyed the little anecdote. Thank you so much for that one. Thanks so much. Thanks. I appreciate it. So now, James, with all of these great stories and all this that we're talking mm -hmm. Somebody who's listening is like, how anti did Then what goes wrong? Yeah, that is the sad part. Well, I remember very well after, I think it was after the U.S. Open, when Tiger just won the, the memorial where Mr. Nicholas invited me in Ohio. So I headed back to... To, um, to Thailand. There was a tournament in Singapore. Mm. So we had a day off that day. And you, mind you, we, as I said, we were, I was still chuffed that I had won this year and I got a three more years, I can play on tour. So when things don't go well that week, you will find a way to have the time off and, and you go into your things. So that week, fortunately, unfortunately that week, I broke my leg while I was trying to do this um, fake surfing in Singapore in Sentosa. And then I was forced to, 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 to come home and, and, and have time off. And unfortunately, that time off I had, I had learned so many things, you know, hanging out with friends, going out, and that became a disturbance, you know? And I got used to that. And it, it just kept on growing and growing. And this... I've never had it in my whole career to 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 bring fun at work, 
And that's just, it kept going on like that because now the injuries were, cre- were growing. I had two eye operations. I had a knee operation. So that those years, those four years are wasted. Those are the years that I needed to add more things on my career. Uh, because with the injuries and, 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 and going out and all that, that killed most of the things. So now when I had to come back and look, as I said to you, these kids are already here. And it was so difficult to compete with them with so much that is going on around. So I needed to be more focused than I was before, which I, I failed to do that. Hmm. When you sit back now, James, I mean, it's over almost two decades later, mm-hmm. you realize the potential you had. You look at those that are now mm-hmm. where they are that you played with. Mm-hmm. What is what is your recollection of your career? When you sit back by yourself on these long flights between, I know you frequent the Eastern Cape and here, how do you remember the James Gunter story to yourself? I, 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 I look at it now and, and, and I say, um, a great team around you would have been a great work. And it would have been so great that they would have kept you on the right, on the right, uh, on the right uh, place. And I look at the boys I used to play with now, and I was like, wow, they are playing in the LAV. I mean, those are the guys I played with. And I'm Hundreds like, they of millions of rands. Hundreds. <sighs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. I even sent Greg Norman an email address and to say, even if I play two tournaments. But now they might look at me and say, where have you been? We haven't even seen you playing it back at home. And, and those are the little, those are the things that when you sit back, it's either you, 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 you kill yourself or, you make sure the one next to you that is growing up will not make the same mistake again because you've gone through that. So that's one of the one of the things I want to the little ones that are coming up that I'm telling you you don't want to go this way or oh, this is how it's going to end up. And that's what most of the white golfers have learned through their own careers that you can do that, but 80 percent what you must do it must be your work. When you, I mean, when you're sitting there now, when you have to email a Greg Norman, of course, who's heading the Live Golf, and you have to ask to play because you're seeing what golf is doing, you're seeing what the competitors mm. in the PGA Tour, the mm. kind of money they're offering. Mm. You sit there and you think to yourself, what did I do to me? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the question I always ask myself. And I say to myself, even if you try and recover, do you have enough time? Nope. That is the only sad part. Even if you try and work four times as hard, all I'm saying is that this is golf we're playing. These kids are sharp week in, week out. Well, I played my first tournament after a while in Swaziland, and I was quite shocked that I can still compete with these kids. So I took that as a positive for me, and I said that, well, if you spend more time on the game, even if you have to double up the time you're spending on the game, you can still get, you, you get another four or five years do you, to, to, to get out there and play golf. You won some amazing tournaments, including some international tournaments. Did James Gumpton make enough money to sustain James moving forward? The tournaments that you won, um, the tournaments that you played in where you finished and placed in a, in, a, in a place where you got paid, did you make enough money then in the dollars that, and the pounds that you were getting paid to at least still be able to be functioning from that now? I'm grateful I had, I had good good people staying with me where you you save until until you are old enough. You know that you've saved enough. And unlike most people, they don't even save. They go out and when they are done with their careers, everything is done. So I still look back and I sit here and I say, I'm grateful for Lindani. You know, I'm grateful for the for the step that I had, Alberto, where they said, hey, whenever it comes in, take this and put it away. And and for, for, um, for, for uh, you know, I took that and I did that. And I look at it now and said, can you imagine if you want, you go, you want to go get it and, and you, you will finish it within no time, you know? And and unfortunately, all, uh, unfortunately, with uh, with, with, that, with the negatives that went through with the career, sponsors ran away. 
You know, and I, I, I don't blame them for that because it, it was not going in the right direction. But the one thing they couldn't understand is that I am not as fit as I was before. You know, but fortunately, the guys in the, the white, the white folks in the, in the, in the, in the golf industry, they, 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 they know each other. They are friends with, with each other's families, you know. So for them to be sponsored in each other week in, year in, year out, it's normal to them. But to our brothers, golf was never, ever exposed that much to them. They want to see you do things that you cannot be, do, do anymore. Winning, winning is, winning is, winning is, is, is everything. But when you get to a stage of saying, okay, I want to play this far because I can still go back and play in Asia on a senior tour. I mean, look how far I'm looking at already. I mean, I'm no longer looking at, at competing with these kids because time is, time is gone. Oh, James Gumpty is our man. Thank you so much, Tapelo James. You're doing work now so that this doesn't happen to another James Gumpty. What Absolutely. is it that you're doing? Sorry? What is it that you're doing? Oh, um... Um, do you mean right now? Yeah, like what are you doing in the, in the foundation that you've set up in order to assist the young ones? Oh, absolutely. Uh, one thing we are doing, we are busy with, with, with life skills because because I think most of our prof- of our athletes in South Africa, they lack life skills, you know? And, and uh, that's what we are trying to engrave into their minds that... This is how you, 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 you conduct yourself as a sports person. And this is a kind of a behavior you need to have as a, as a sports person. Number two, you need to know how to save and how to do that. You know, some of us, we come from, from different backgrounds where um, you don't only work for yourself only. You've got the others that you have. Once you, you kind of make it, you know that you've got to support that person, you've got to support that person. So it's different for us, you know, just like you work, you work for your own. You work and be like, hey, all the guys around me that I grew up with, I need to also help them around me, you know. But right now, my, 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 my most focus right now is to just give back to the youngsters. I mean, I did the same thing when I was in Egypt a couple of months ago, and I want to do it back at home so that these kids, if they really want to be golfers, they need to know how to conduct themselves. So for me right now, the most important thing is to eat to engrave the life skills in their, in their heads while they are still young. Let me tell you, um, there's a quote from Ted Lasso who says, you know how they say that youth is wasted on the young? And I know you might feel like that. He turns around and says, well, I say don't let the wisdom of age be wasted on you. James, Absolutely. all the very best. We wish you and thank you so much for sharing.